In your opinions, does British culture have any redeeming qualities? Yeah, countryside's really nice. Like, you know, owned it's by a bunch culture, of countries. culture, that's but, a know. place. Yeah, and yeah, like... that's you, geography. Yeah, the, well... The cult... I, I'll go with the cultural history of the miners' strike and, like, basically all the strike action that took place in the UK, including, like, Red Clydeside and all the rest of it. There is a strong, rich vein of that, and it's pretty cool. Unfortunately, it's in decline. Yeah, unfortunately, think, it's all yeah. in history. I mm. think the, the complete, like, fucking inability to, like see serial killers as anything other than like a source of comedy do you know what i mean like you, you contrast <laughs> that you contrast that with america where they're all like you know america's just constantly like wishing they for had, them. yeah just wishing they had more serial killers because it's like oh this guy was so scary oh he's so powerful oh how did he kill all these people and everything and then over here it's like oh we dug up this this lad's patio and there was like 80 bodies underneath it and the next the next day like every comedian in the country every school child in the country everyone like in the pub everywhere is making jokes about it you know what i mean it's just like absolutely the, uh, no the, respect for it's all like, the, it's all the murderers all the times people send in fred and rosemary west's picture asking for like a radio dj or, or whatever <laughs> it is to do like a call out for them <laughs> yeah yeah um yeah, it's probably yeah, um, complete disregard for uh, complete disregard for generally being well. I suppose in some ways, like I a would, fucking positive. I don't know. I, I think say it's because like, I think it's because actually being a serial killer is like the ultimate form of trying to pick your own nickname, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell! Yeah. <laughs> I would I would actually say like I know I know we're like led to believe or we or like the media l- tries to lead us to believe that this isn't the case but British culture overwhelmingly pretty much has a you know just this built-in assumption of like you know just let people get on with their lives like yeah you know the, the reason the reason why I like was... yeah I like not talking to my neighbors <laughs> <laughs> But like, yeah, just you know, they're not doing anyone any harm. Is like uh, the quintessentially British, um, you know, just opinion on oh, someone's doing something weird, and as long as they're not doing anyone any damage, like yeah, all good. Oh, good yeah. actually, no, I, I do have an answer: the British attitude towards customer service. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, like, I, yeah, th- actually, that like... American shit fucking kills me. I do yeah. not want service with a smile. I merely want service. Do not make the person smile on my behalf. I don't want that for them. Look, I, I my my, it. my it's my goal too. in life to be the the like ideal the platonic ideal customer. Like, I'm sorry that I'm asking you a question, but I do need to yeah. know, and I would rather not have to ask you and cause you any level of inconvenience. See, when, yeah. when we used to, when we used to go on like holidays, which was like always like in Britain, we, we when we were kids. Like, would always, like, stop at this fucking one cafe on the A1. You know, back when, like, you could see an independent business, like, on a motorway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. Instead of it all being, like, fucking happy shoppers and then, like, Granada services. So Return the volatile one, chef, yeah. There mm. was one, like, independent cafe somewhere in Yorkshire down at the side of the A1. And the woman who ran that was the most miserable bastard you've ever met in your life. It was <laughs> fucking great, like... <laughs> yeah just be sat there having like fucking egg and chips and she's like fucking screaming at truckers to get the fuck out if they're not gonna like do you know what i mean behave themselves <laughs> properly and all this sort of shit it was great <laughs> uh okay yeah i think that um I don't know. can i, well, and, I think another weird, another like... top when when alistair brought up like um like you know people people weird people aren't doing any harm the fucking the somerset gimp <laughs> Grave injustice, except, honestly. Except, like, except, like, by all accounts, he was actually doing people harm, like jumping yeah. out in front of apart, cars apart and stuff. So, apart yeah, from apart from all the harm, <laughs> it's just a harmless yeah. game. Um, uh, slightly, I don't know, maybe what, slightly it, it, weird thing because it's very complex and a lot of it is incredibly shit. But just on a localized example, what I really, really like is uh, like my my father-in-law goes to the pub 
um and then like every every sunday um since uh my mother-in-law passed uh they make him like a roast dinner and put it on a like on one of their plates and then they give it to him to take home and, and eat after having pints in the pub and i think that's just oh, that's really nice. lovely and nice that is very nice yeah yeah there are there are some nice elements of pub culture um a lot of it's dog shit but some of it is quite nice and you tend to find that in like more actual like village level community type stuff um it's yeah it can it can be yeah, good. places places where like an actual community still exists yeah where, yeah. yeah yeah exactly it's um it's a bit of a knife edge because like lads but the uh the thing where no one ever takes any of their mates like really seriously especially like when the, the mate is trying to like seem impressed with something do you know what i mean like there's no there's no way like faster way to get like the piss ripped out of you than to turn up in like a fucking shirt that you think looks mint you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, we 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 had a friend who uh, tried to like profess their their level of culturedness by um, telling us that they'd had dinner up the shard, and I tell you what, they have not heard the end of it since. <laughs> <laughs> Was Baby Gronk there? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Li- yeah. Lizzie like, rizzed him up. I heard. Yeah, like a, a, a lad, a lad I knew um, at, in college. Turned up in double denim with a little leather waistcoat that his mom had like fucking presumably picked out for him. Oh, this is like at age oh, seventeen no. or something, and oh. people, I, there are people who still call him Cowboy Trev. So, 